This is Junko Furuta's hair sticking out of the cement block. Junko is in this tub. I fucking hate that. Ew, you're ugly. <laughs> Yeah. You know, she took Junko into an abandoned warehouse and revealed his Yakuza connection. Oh story. my fuck. He then took his time raping her over and over. She was beaten physically every day. She was beaten with golf clubs, iron rods. At times, she was forced to eat cockroaches and drink urine. You try that that Japanese and like that Korean bullying and torture stuff over here in America, your ass is waking up half paralyzed. I'm sorry, bro. And then if you go to jail, the other inmates that you're that you're with, once they hear about what you did, you're also not surviving in there. So that's the one part I love about America. By the time of this recording, every single one of the four boys is out of jail and living free. Wait, somebody linked their Twitter? Is that him? Is this one of the killers? <laughs> oh my god. Oh my- dude, I don't think I'm ready. In today's video, we are going to be watching the Junko Furuta case in complete detail. Fair warning, this is a very disgusting, gruesome, demonic case. If you're watching this video on YouTube, make sure to join us on Twitch. Follow me on Twitch. Uh, as you can see over there, there's chat over there. We watch things together. It's a lot of fun. And also make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Are we ready, chat? Let's watch this case and not sleep tonight. One of the most common suggestions to make a video about, and one of the most common questions on Q&As that I get, is what is the most horrific case I've ever heard of? It's a case that I'm sure a lot of you have heard Oh my god, holy shit. We didn't even ease into it. 16 seconds in, and we're already seeing this image. I'm not gonna spoil it. Okay, you know what, I'll just say it, dude. This is, this is Junko Furuta's hair sticking out of the cement block. Junko is in this fucking tub. Her body is anyway. That I'm sure a lot of you have heard of by now. But I'm not sure if you've ever heard about it in complete, gruesome detail. We have not. Last chance, chap. If you're a bitch, leave. This is the story of Junko Furuta, widely considered to be one of the worst crimes ever committed in human history. So for the love of God, please don't watch this if you're sensitive to extreme violence, uh, especially of the sexual variety. Oh my Trust god, me. dude. All my memories are coming back with every little thing he says. <sighs> There is a like there is a sexual abuse component to this as well in oh my god. Junko Furuta was a young woman who was born in Misato in the Saitama prefecture of Japan. Her family consisted of a mother, father, an older brother, and a younger brother. She attended high school at a school in Saitama while working part-time at a plastic molding factory after school. She was saving up for a big graduation trip she was planning. She was all set up to start working at an electronics store after she graduated. She was fairly popular and well-liked by her classmates. Aww. She had great grades and was hardly ever absent. She was active, attractive, and attracted a lot of attention, which made some people jealous. Oh God. She didn't drink, didn't smoke, and definitely never touched any drugs. This made her seem very lame in the eyes of the thugs around the school, the Yakuza wannabes. I fucking hate that. Ew. <laughs> Ew, you're ugly. <laughs> yeah. Ew. No, yeah, but I fucking hate how nowadays everybody seems to be doing drugs or smoking. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't, like, weed, vapes, drinking alcohol every fucking weekend. And that's, like, just considered normal nowadays for young people. It's fucking, that's cringe. I'm sorry. One of the boys in this group was named Hiroshi Miyano. He actually developed a bit of a crush on her and wanted to get physical with her. <gasps> Imagine this analog horror looking ass demon having a crush on you. <laughs> Ew, you fucking- He developed oh. a bit of a crush on her and wanted to get physical with her. He proposed this and she refused. Hiroshi was a pretty big bully in this school, one of the only ones actually involved with the younger members of the Yakuza at the time. Usually, nobody dared defy him. <clears throat> he couldn't believe that Junko actually had the gall to turn him down. I'd be more surprised Hiroshi if she did didn't. did not take this well at all. 
He couldn't believe that anyone would ever reject him. He took it as a complete and total insult. He got together with a few of his wannabe Yakuza buddies and they all hatched a plan to get revenge on Junko. <laughs> they would get another one of their friends to attack Junko and then <gasps> she would come to the rescue. What a piece of After shit. After bit of her trust, they could take her wherever they wanted. Wait, he set up a fake assault so that he could save her? November 25th of 1988. Junko was riding her bike home from her part-time job when an unknown boy attacked her and knocked her off of her bike. The boy who liked her, Hiroshi Miyano, was conveniently across the street while the whole thing happened. He came to Junko's aid and scared off the random boy. He then offered to escort her home. Everything seemed to be going as planned. While Junko didn't actually trust him, it seemed better than the alternative of possibly being attacked again. She didn't have any idea that Hiroshi harbored any sort of hatred towards her. She wouldn't have imagined that he would be planning anything like this. Hiroshi took Junko into an abandoned warehouse and revealed his Yakuza connections Oh to my her. fuck. He then took his time raping her over and over. Piece of shit, bro. If I could get my hands on one of these fucking bastards, I would- Then he took her to a hotel. In the hotel, he called his friends, Joe Ogura and Yasushi Watanabe. From then on, he and his three friends took turns assaulting her. All these motherfuckers look like demons! Unfortunately, this was not their first time doing this, as they had just recently done it to another girl in the past few weeks. They decided that they were having far too much fun to just set her free again. There was also the possibility that she would call the cops and tell them what happened, and they couldn't have that. The next morning, Hiroshi took Junko to a nearby park, where Joe, Yasushi, and a fourth boy, Nobuharu Minato, were waiting. They learned Junko's address and used it to threaten her, oh my telling God. her that they would kill her entire family if she tried to get away. That's such a fucked situation, dude. Like when you start, it's one thing if like if you're the you're the main one being threatened. Like they're threatening you directly. When your family gets involved, you are literally trapped. Like you feel like you can't do anything. The four teenage boys then took her back to Minato's parents' home, where they continued to assault her. This is where, for forty-two more days, she would be held prisoner. 42 days? On the third day that Junko was missing, her parents were dealing with the police, trying- 42 fucking days of just torture. ...trying to get her found. Knowing this would happen, the captors made her call her parents and tell them that she had run away and was staying with a friend, safe and sound. Oh, it's 44 total. She was forced yeah. to ask her mom to stop the investigation. No. They held Junko captive in the bedroom, forcing her to pose as one of the boy's girlfriend. It didn't take long for the parents to realize that this was a lie. Eventually, they dropped the whole girlfriend act altogether, as it was very clear that they weren't going to get in any trouble. Immediately after arriving at the home, the boys forced Junko into becoming their toy. They beat her relentlessly and raped her countless times a day, often taking turns. Oh my They were fuck, proud of what bro. they were doing regularly boasting to their friends like they just look they always have a look to them you're not born into this world looking like this and expected to be normal like i'm sorry friends that they had a woman trapped and ready for their personal use they invited a load of their friends to come over and have their way with her in the first few days at least 30 of them raped her and at least 100 knew of her imprisonment even women were invited to come see the spectacle with a young girl even being invited to come over and see the prisoner who then took a pin and doodled on her face. By the day seven mark, Junko had been already completely stripped of all of her humanity. She was forced to be naked at all times and was constantly beaten and humiliated. They would shove her into the freezer for hours when they were bored with her, only pulling her out when they wanted to assault her again. Oh. Nobuharu Minato's brother and parents were living in the same house that she was being held in. His brother did nothing, aside from informing him that Junko might die at this rate. 
His parents were afraid to intervene as they had seen Nobuharu's violent nature firsthand. Wait, they so did the parents just like stop? I know that they said that they forced Junko to tell her mom to like stop the investigation, but after a certain point, you have to ignore that word and then just be like, yo, I need to look for my fucking daughter. Let's continue this fucking investigation. Like, where is she? They also knew of his association with the Yakuza and feared of their possible retaliation. And most disgustingly, they worried about losing their good reputation in the community. After about 10 days of this torture, Junko's body was already starting to fail her. Because of the ongoing, endless beatings, so much blood had accumulated in her <clears throat> sinuses that she could no longer breathe through her nose. No. Her digestive system was also beginning to refuse food and water. If she attempted to eat or drink anything, she would instantly vomit. That's so this also fucked, led to bro. Severe dehydration. Anytime she would vomit, her attackers would get angry and beat her even further. A vicious cycle that had no end in sight. When the nights got even colder, she was forced to sleep on the balcony of the home in extreme cold temperatures, sometimes near or below freezing. Eventually, one of the men that the attackers would invite over to the house to see Junko would go on to tell someone else about her, his brother. This brother of his ended up informing the police about what was going on at the Minato house. Two officers were soon dispatched to go check things out. Finally? Holy Minato's fuck! Minato's parents came to the door. When the police explained the situation, the parents simply responded that there was no girl in the house. The police took it at face value, thanked them, and left without ever bothering to check even a single detail. In all of these cases, it's not even, dude, I thought police were useless in America. Almost every case that we've gone through in Japan, police are just incompetent. They're hired to go investigate, like they're assigned an investigation. They go to the location and what's the thing that they don't do? They don't fucking investigate. <laughs> they just ask, is there a girl here? Hmm. No? Well, all right, I believe you. All right, goodbye. Sorry for bothering you. Actually, here, let me give you some money. Here, for wasting your time. Okay, bye, guys. Do your fucking job. Ask questions. Probe. You're the fucking police. After 20 days of torture, Junko was rendered completely unable to walk. She had had lighter fluid poured on her legs and set on fire. Oh, my God. Severe burns. Her legs had also been targeted so severely during the beatings that they were left with severe muscle damage. She was unable to grip anything with her hands anymore, as they had been smashed with dumbbells to the point where her bones were crushed and her fingernails were shattered. Some nights later, the attackers got more rowdy than usual and ended up drinking too much. Junko took this as a chance to try to escape. She crawled down the stairs from the bedroom and reached the phone downstairs. She picked up the phone and began to call the police. The phone rang and an officer picked up. Just as she was about to speak, Hiroshi came up behind her and grabbed the phone from her hands. Oh my god. He put the receiver to his ear and said, I dialed by mistake, hanging up the phone. You she asshole fucker. Bedroom. She was in complete terror as she would obviously be severely punished for this. And she I can just imagine like how scary that must have been. Because like in that situation, you're probably scared to even try and go for help because you're scared that they're going to kill you. But she mustered up what remaining amount of courage she had and energy because like you know she was being beat for two weeks straight like i feel like even getting to the phone was a challenge for her physically was correct they punished her by holding her probably down, crawling taunting her by waving a candle's flame all around her then they covered her entire body mainly her legs in lighter fluid and set her on fire once more Afterwards, she started convulsing. Oh my god. The boys told everyone that she was faking it and set her Dude. on fire once again, only to put it out shortly after. Somehow, she survived. From this point on, she began begging her captors to just kill her and be done with it. They wouldn't grant her that favor. After being set on fire, they discovered a new way to torture her. The boys would hold her head against the concrete while the others would jump on it. One can only imagine what kind of pain and damage this would have caused. After about 30 days, Junko was no longer able to urinate properly. Oh she had suffered severe damage to her genitals after they had been burned with cigarette lighters. She also had various foreign objects inserted into her, many sharp and jagged. Even fireworks had been inserted into her. 
The fireworks were not limited to only one orifice, as they were also inserted into her mouth and ears as well. She was left with... I need a break. Wait, somebody linked their Twitter? Is that him? Is this one of the killers? Oh my god, dude. Oh, dude, I fucking love y'all. Look at the look at the comments that are being left under anything that he tweets. You know what should also be known? The fact that you tortured, graped, and murdered a woman. I'm going to I'm going to be a little unhinged. I hope you guys can forgive me for that. Um yeah, he should maybe uh, not be here anymore. I'm sorry. Eardrum damage so severe that she was nearly deaf at this point. Her hands and feet were so damaged that she could hardly move. At best, she could crawl. It took her over an hour to crawl to the bathroom. A later report showed that her brain size was greatly reduced by this point in time. Due to her hellish appearance, the boys no longer found her attractive. They used the same strategy again to abduct and gang rape another 19-year-old woman while she was on her way home from work. During these 44 days of hell, Junko Furuta was forced to withstand the most unspeakable torture and suffering that a person can imagine. 44 Some days. Of what was done to her includes being raped many times every single day, day and night, in all orifices. More than 100 men are believed to have raped her by the end. Sometimes she was raped by up to 12 different attackers in a single day. Constant humiliation. She was forced to be left naked most of the time. Many of the men who raped her also urinated on her. She was forced to pleasure herself in front of the attackers for their entertainment. She was beaten physically every day. She was beaten with golf clubs, iron rods, bamboo sticks, and various other objects. She had dumbbells dropped all over her body and her head stomped against the I remember that. The first. They would drop dumbbells like on her abdomen and, and stuff like that. She had hot wax poured all over her face with a focus on her eyelids. Her eyelids were also burned with cigarettes and cigarette lighters. She was violated with a long list of various objects shoved into all orifices, including but not limited to Bottles, both broken and unbroken, iron bars, scissors, roasting needles, chicken skewers, and more. She was given only the strict bare minimum of food and water. At times, she was forced to eat cockroaches and drink urine. Dude. She had fireworks put into all of her orifices, leaving damage and severe burns. She had her left nipple ripped off by a pair of pliers. This is actually psychotic. At this point, they weren't just torturing. This is like, this is some shit that these, that these boy, that these fucking monsters, no, these aren't boys, that these fucking monsters were born with. Th that is actually mental illness, like morbid experimentation to fulfill like this curiosity that you have with just fucking something up. I don't know, dude. She would be tied up flat on the floor and had dumbbells dropped all over her body. The drops on her abdomen were so hard that it caused her to lose all control of her bowels. She was hung from the ceiling and used as a punching bag. She was shoved into a freezer and kept there for hours at a time. Her eyelids were burned with hot wax and lighters when she closed her eyes in fear. Her breasts were stabbed with sewing needles, the needles often being left inside. Her genitals were burned with cigarettes and lighters. She had a hot lit light bulb inserted into her vagina and moved around into Oh my shadow. fucking god. By the end, she looked like a completely different person after all of the damage. It was hard to even make out her facial features. Her body was severely damaged and crippled and she smelled as if she were already rotting. She was continuously heavily bleeding from her genitals from all of the abuse. She wheezed heavily, struggling to breathe from all of the blood accumulated in her sinuses. On day 40, January 1st, day 40. she woke up to New Year's Day alone. She spent the day begging to be I'm gonna cry, dude. unable to move. Three days later, on the fateful day of the 4th of January, the boys challenged Jungo to a game of Mahjong Solitaire and forced her to play. Somehow, even in her condition, she won the game. This infuriated her captors, who treated her to a severe beating with an iron barbell, and then poured lighter fluid all over her arms, her legs, her stomach, and finally her face, dumping lighter fluid even into her eyes. Then they put a candle to her face, igniting it all. 
She weakly attempted to put out the flames, but didn't have the strength to do so. This final torture lasted for a grueling two hours altogether. Already having been in a horrible condition, Junko went into shock and finally died the following day. No, yeah, at that point she was just begging to be put down. Minato's brother called him within 24 hours to inform him that 44 days, the dude. The boys all rushed over to the house in a panic, fearing what would certainly be a live sentence. All of you fucks, I want to like, I want to sit you down on a chair, strap you to where you can't move, just get a fucking barbed, a, a fucking barbed bat and just whack the shit out of their heads. Or even a death sentence, the boys started to freak out, but they came up with a plan. The captors then put her body into a 55-gallon oil drum and filled it to the brim with concrete. A small bit of Junko's long hair was poking out the top of the concrete, something they apparently didn't notice. They disposed of the barrel at a construction site in Koto, Tokyo. Seeing that place now, you'd never imagine something like this was buried there. There was originally a good chance that the police would never find out who did this. <clears throat> there weren't any clues to go on. Luckily, Hiroshi is a moron. While he was being questioned by the police two weeks later involving their recent gang rape of the unrelated 19-year-old woman, he got confused and thought the police were talking about Junko, as the cases were so similar. Jesus Christ. So they were doing this to other girls, too. God, so, okay, and, and also it's good. He's not just a fucking terrifying, ugly-looking piece of shit. He's also a fucking dumbass, so that's good. And thinking that one of the other boys must have already confessed, he spilled the beans. He Fucking realized idiot. his mistake, but it was already too late, and he told the police where they had hid the body. Joe Ogura had already been arrested for another unrelated sexual assault case. He was quickly also arrested for Junko's case as well. The other boys were then arrested within the next few days. Later, the drum was finally opened and the concrete was broke open revealing Junko's long-deceased body in a nightmare-inducing Oh my fuck, condition. bro. Junko's family was notified and told of what happened to her in detail. When her mother heard the details of what was done to her, she I can't even imagine what the parents felt, dude. A, an autopsy was performed on Junko, revealing the true horror of what had happened to her. Small bottles were found still stuck in her rectal cap. Imagine as the parent hearing something as terrifying, as terrible as this. Your daughter has been found in a concrete slab in a tub in the middle of like some construction site. And it was revealed that she was pregnant, although the damage to her uterus was severe. Her face was so completely mutilated that she had to be identified by her fingerprints. Being that they were juveniles, the court withheld the names of the four captors. But journalists from Shukan Bunshin magazine were able to find out exactly who they were and publish the names of all of them. Good. Stating that they were inhuman. Fuck it. And therefore didn't deserve human rights. Nobody really contested this. As we know, they were Hiroshi Miyano, 18 at the time. Joe Ogura, also 18 at the time. Nobuharu Minato, who was 16 at the time, and Yasushi Watanabe, who was 17. All four of these monsters were caught and sent to trial. During each trial, it was pretty common for onlookers to pass out upon hearing the details of the case. Even with all that they had done, they didn't really show any semblance of remorse. And despite all of this, they received extremely light sentences for such horrific crimes. They were actually still being tried as juveniles, but after much backlash, they were changed to uh, adult status. Okay. Still, after being upgraded to adult status, they received unbelievably light sentences. Like what? Something that, to this day, continues to enrage people who hear about this case. The boys, somehow, were not charged with murder. Instead, they received a charge called causing bodily injury resulting in death. In Japan, the juvenile court system is far more focused on rehabilitation rather than punishment. Something that you'll remember if- Okay, rehabilitation is like nice and shit in theory, but for a case like this, you have to be like- You have to have some common sense like- these fuckers aren't gonna become normal upstanding citizens. Usually this means that juveniles will end up getting relatively very low sentences. Hiroshi was sentenced to 20 years in prison. 
Minato got a five to seven year sentence himself. That's it? They got nine years. And Joe got an eight year sentence. Bro. One sad thing is that these monsters actually received even lower sentences than that at first. There were only increase to the still low amount after- Wait, are they free today? It was so low that some people even questioned if their Yakuza ties were to blame for this. By the time of this recording, every single one of the four boys is out of jail and living free. Three of them were in jail for less than eight years. Hiroshi, the ringleader, was sentenced to 17 years originally. He tried to appeal, but as kind of a fuck you, the judge actually upped his case to 20 years. The same Good, thing bitch. happened to two of the other boys, and after seeing enough, the fourth boy decided not to try to appeal. However, they all ended up getting out long before those sentences were actually up. And I bet you're wondering if they continued to commit crimes after they got out of jail. I swear to God. Well, let's see. After Nobuhara Minato got out of jail, he changed his first name to Shinji. He did this for obvious reasons. In 2006, he got married to a woman from Romania and had a daughter together. They soon divorced and the wife ended up with custody of the child. Minato couldn't stay away from murder for too long. He was eventually arrested again for the attempted murder of a businessman. The man had noticed Minato staring at him, to which he asked, What are you looking at? Minato came over and punched the man. The man then got out of his oh. car and the fight ensued. It escalated to the point that Minato took out a baton and beat him severely. As the victim tried to get back into his car, Minato slashed his neck with a knife he Holy had Holy shit! The police were called at some point and they rushed to aid the victim. In the chaos, Minato escaped. He was soon caught and arrested. He denied attempted murder, saying he only intended to beat the man. The case is ongoing. Thank you for the five Joe bits. Ogura was released in August of 1999. He also ended up changing his name to Joe Kamisaku. He actually had the gall to brag about his role in the kidnap and torture. You. His father had vowed to give their entire life savings to Junko's family out of shame. But Joe ended up taking this money and using it for himself to live a fairly extravagant lifestyle. Joe's mother wasn't much better. Kill yourself, I'm sorry, in a video game. Junko's Fuck me. Grave saying that it was Junko who ruined her son's life. Joe actually managed Sorry. to find some women to date him. He ended up marrying a Chinese woman, but the marriage didn't last too long. Afterwards, he started dating another woman. He went back to prison in July 2004 for seven years for beating a guy he thought was luring his girlfriend away from him. He had kidnapped and beaten the man for four hours. He so he basically did, like, a mini version of what he did to Junko. Ali told the victim that he had killed before and would do it again. He was sentenced to four years in prison. But in 2009, he was once again free. And he is still free to this day. The ringleader, Hiroshi Miyano, went right back into his previous gang activity immediately after being released from prison. Almost he was done. arrested for fraud at some point after this, but didn't see jail time for it. Right now, it seems that he's living a fairly normal life. Some might even say a good life. He is a regular patron at a local kickboxing gym and appears to have a normal social life. As of now, Yasushi Watanabe is the only one of the four boys who hasn't been arrested since. Because of that, it's not really known what he's been up to. Since the investigation first started, the police have been able to get DNA from the sperm and pubic hairs found in evidence to link oh. several more criminals to the crime. Oh my god. Including two men named Koichi oh my god. and Tetsuo Nakamura, both of whom were arrested, and there are probably many others who have not been revealed to the public. It is unknown if they will all face any sort of charges. Time will tell. She was such a beautiful young girl, dude. Japan is like a, a beautiful country. I hope that like with watching cases like this, it doesn't it doesn't make you think that Japan is like always like this. Like these cases are rare, albeit they're fucking terrifying. This isn't like to scare you, but like I'm sorry. If anything like this, if anything like this happened here in America though, Mm, 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 mm. We don't give a fuck. If we see your ass here, you're getting jumped, bro. You try that that Japanese and like that Korean like bullying and torture stuff over here in America, your ass is waking up half paralyzed. I'm sorry, bro. And then if you go to jail, the other inmates that you're that you're with, once they hear about what you did, you're also 
not surviving in there. So that's the one part I fucking love about America. You do some fuck shit like this, you're fucked in real life, and you're fucked in jail. You're not safe. The hardest thing about these cases is always that, like, the person that ends up being the victim has such a beautiful life uh, ahead of them. Just for it to be stripped away and destroyed by these fucking monsters. Where are they? These troglodytes. You really think these people are going to contribute anything to the world? She was 17? Okay, yeah, she was 17. She was really young. A beautiful life taken away by these things. That's the part that pisses me off the most. There's this fucking Twitter. Go to hell and take your mom with you for birthing you. Hehe. <laughs> <laughs>